Good day and welcome back to the channel. We love bringing you tractor research and history as well as farming videos. So if you're a fan of those videos, go ahead and hit subscribe. Today's topic, the John Deere Model B, one of the best selling John Deere row crop tractors of all time. In today's video, we're gonna be diving deep into some of the prototypes of this tractor as well as looking at what made it such a good seller. For this story to start, we gotta go back to the late 20s and early 30s. John Deere's first shot at a row crop tractor was the GP, standing for general purpose. These tractors were set to compete with the good selling farm malls of the day. The Model D was selling well for John Deere, but wasn't a row crop tractor, and more farmers were pushing to get their machines off the ground farther for mounting cultivators. John Deere would be developing a two-plow tractor in the early 30s that would become the Model A. With the dirty 30s affecting the economy, farm machinery producers focused on something more economical and smaller, and it said in 1933, John Deere would begin working on an experimental HX tractor that would become the Model B. The Experimental HX was a size down Model A that was meant to be more cost effective and easier to build. By 1934, the John Deere HX had been updated and changed to look more like the unstyled B's we know today. It'd be in that year also, the name would be changed to the Model B and you'd see the first ones rolling off the assembly line. The 1935 John Deere B's would see an all brass serial number tag that would set it apart from what was to come the following year. John Deere would change to aluminum serial number tags, but during World War II, they'd have to switch to steel. This unstyled B would be powered by a two-cylinder gas 149cc engine with a four and a quarter inch bore by five and a quarter inch stroke. This would produce 12 horsepower at the drawbar and 16 horsepower at the belt. One of the big advantages to the Model B at the time was that it was able to burn lower quality fuels compared to other tractors on the market. John Deere would start these engines from a smaller tank on gasoline and you'd be able to switch them over to your lower grade distillate. To start this tractor, it'd be the flywheel hand start, just like the Model A. Upon release, you'd have four main variants, the most common being the narrow front end, as well as the BR, which was a fixed front axle. You'd also have the BN, this would be a single wheel front end. The early ones of these would get nicknamed the garden tractor or the vegetable model. There'd be 1,001 of these produced. You'd also get a sub variant here, the BNH, which was a high crop with a narrow single front wheel, which wasn't released till the following year, which there was only 65 produced. And last, you'd have the BW, which was a wide front adjustable for row crop. There'd be 247 of these built. You'd also get a high crop version of this as well, the BWH, which there was 51 produced. You'd also get the BW40, which there was only six produced. Many of these rare tractors were shipped to California to work on vegetable farms and in orchards. The following year would bring us two more variants of the Model B, the BR and the BI. The BR would be a standard version, where the BI would be an industrial tractor painted industrial yellow. It would also be in 35 that John Deere would go away from the 4 bolt steering pedestal and move it up to 8 bolts. 1936 would also see John Deere making a temperature gauge standard equipment on the Model B. It would also be around this time that John Deere would send out some of the BOs to Lindemann to make them into crawlers, and I got a whole video on that, I'll link in the description. The unstyled Model B would weigh in at 3,200 pounds compared to the Model A that would weigh in at nearly 3,800 pounds. Between 1937 and 38, you'd see another update to the Model B. The frame would be extended by five inches. Many of these early Model Bs ship with steel wheels, but the rubber option was also made available. The Model B would compete very well with the F12s on the market, being able to hold up power-wise and price-wise. For the transmission, the B had four forward speeds and one reverse. John Deere would have to take things from the A, but also redesign this transmission to fit inside of the Model B. With less room, they had to change the gear ratios to keep the output speed at the required RPM. Another little known fact about these John Deere's is you'll often hear them referred to as the teardrop drawbar. This is a loop drawbar that was only made available from 34 to 37 on the A's and B's. 
According to Deer, the Model B could outwork six to eight horses. This would be big for farmers in the time coming off the Great Depression and needing something small to upgrade from their horses. Now to compare the unstyled Model B to the other two tractors in John Deere's line of row crops. The Model B was rated at being able to pull a 210 plow in light soil. The John Deere A would be able to pull a 214 plow as well as some bigger plows in lighter soil. And the Model G would be able to pull a 314 plow. This meant with the Model G you could cover twice as much ground as you could with the Model B. After adjusting for inflation, the price gap between these tractors would be about 10 grand a piece. All in all, the unstyled B achieved its goal at being a smaller and more cost effective option compared to the Model A. According to Deere, you could save $1 to $2 a day by not having to run premium gasoline in this tractor. As the years went on, a lot of these flat spoke steel wheels were cut off with rims welded to the outside, making them set up for tires. This is why today, you don't see a lot of these John Deere B's on steel wheels. Between 1935 and 1938, John Deere would pump out 55,670 unstyled Model B tractors. The John Deere tractor line would get a huge makeover in 1939, styling all the row crop tractors. And that's where we'll pick up in the next Model B tractor history. We're also going to be covering the unstyled A's and unstyled G's, so stay tuned for that. And if there's a tractor that you want to hear about, let me know down in the comments and we just might get to it. So I'm curious, if you've ever driven a bee, or if you own one, and what kind of plow you pull with it, let me know down in the comments. And with that out of the way, I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.